Hello everyone, this is Kestrel Raptorial. So, it is the 1st of August, 2018, and we've got a few, uh, some interesting, some frightening, but very important newest stories to go through. So, first, on Monday, July 30, 2018, a magnitude 6.4 earthquake shook the Indonesian tourist island Lombok, scaring hundreds of people, sending them scrambling down from Mount Rinjani. Lombok is a small island in the Bali province of Indonesia, just uh, next to the island of Bali, pointed out here on this map. Indonesia is a single nation, an island chain that was mostly connected by land during the last ice age. But when the glaciers melted, the lower regions were submerged again, and they remain islands to this day. But being between the Indonesian and Pacific Oceans, uh, it is in one of the most tectonically active regions on the planet. A lot of plate boundaries there. So it gets a lot of earthquakes, a lot of active volcanoes, and on the island of Sumatra, that inland lake that's just large enough to be placed on world maps is actually the supervolcano Toba, which erupted about 74,000 years ago, nearly wiped out all human populations alive at the time. Now, this Mount Rinjani is a popular tourist hiking and climbing location. Around 800 people, maybe more, were on the mountain when the earthquake struck and the consequential landslides rendered the trails to and from the mountain's crater uh, impassable for a few days. We know so far that 16 were killed and over 100 were injured. Um, much more detail than that is hard to come across, but um, when the land shook and the slides came, there were people half stuck in the rocks Many thought the volcano itself had erupted, uh, but no, no, this time it was just an earthquake. Although a 6.4 is definitely strong enough to cause serious damage of any kind, I mean, um, structural, uh, to the landscape. Uh, th this one was landbound, so it did not cause a tsunami. You know, every time I talk about volcanoes and earthquakes, uh, I'll say this, I've said it before, I'll say it again. These geologic forces and processes are of such a scale that no matter how good scientific instruments are or get, there's always going to be a considerable factor of unpredictability uh, in timing and in scale itself. And what's rough for the Indonesians and people visiting the area is that that region is one of Earth's primary hot zones of tectonic May. Next, a bit of weird news. Um, on July 20th of this year, three people stole a small horn shark named Helen from the San Antonio, California Aquarium. The thieves brought their own net with them to snag it, so this was predetermined. It was one of those little shallow open to the room aquariums, not one that's built into the wall that any thief would really be going through more trouble than anyone's worth to break into. So they apparently wrapped the horn shark in a blanket and carried it to, in a stroller to their car. That's really odd. Now, when authorities who I'm guessing had been watching the events take place on camera at the aquarium and then monitored them uh, via the parking lot cameras. Huh. Tracked the thieves' vehicle to the garage. wonder why they didn't stop them in the parking lot. But uh, they... At the garage, they found a miniature aquarium setup. Uh, these thieves had been collecting marine animals and keeping them alive and well. They, they were somewhat knowledgeable. So, the authorities did reacquire the shark, um, was returned on Monday, Monday, July 30th, and is back at the San Antonio, and uh, 
Helen the Horn Shark is back at the San Antonio Aquarium in good health. So, weird story, but yeah, that happened. A far less strange kind of news, or at least that's what sh it should have been, though it really has surprised me just how few people were, a were, a were aware of the Tommy Robinson story to begin with. I've been trying to talk with family members about the story, and most of them, except for my dad and brother, want to flat out deny its existence at all, which is of real concern. Today, Tommy Robinson won his court appeal. Uh, okay, first, let me go into a little bit of history. Tommy Robinson, for those of you who don't know, but if you don't, you really should research the case and the events and pay very close attention is a father and an activist in the United Kingdom, uh, an activist by necessity, who spent a long time risking everything, his career, his life, his family, all to bring to light the truth about the gigantic scale, enslavement and destruction of tens of thousands of European children by the Muslim migrants who have formed rape gangs in numbers unbelievable that you would numbers that you would find are being ignored would be unbelievable but they are of Europe of young girls and boys and for trying to bring truth to the people he was thrown in prison by, by the British police and courts without a trial earlier this year, all just to shut him up so they can continue with their deluded fantasy of multiculturalism. Eventually, through the efforts of alternative media reporters, public pressure, and people like you and me, as well who have spread the word and kept eyes on the situation, he was granted an appeal recently, and today was the big decision. And thank God he won. He is free, though this is only the first step towards liberating the European people and their children again. To learn about Tommy Robinson and keep an eye on the events, and keep an eye on the events, you can go to TommyTrial.com. I will post a link to that in my video description below. A thank you to Ezra Levant and everyone at the Rebel Media for informing the world about this going on and to Stefan Molyneux and Lauren Southern as well. They have a well-reported series on the Tommy Robinson case and the very real concerns surrounding it. And I very much urge you to go and watch those. They can be found right here on YouTube. The links will be below. Because we cannot trust the mainstream media at all these days, Ezra Levant flew to London personally to see what the results of Tommy Robinson's appeal would be. He does need a bit of help paying for the trip that he made on literally a moment's notice to bring us this information. So if you have a couple of dollars to spare for that cause, you can go to the Rebel Media slash Tommy Trials. I gave a few bucks today. The link will be in the description as well. Also, Lauren Southern's long-awaited documentary, Farmlands, is now finished and uploaded for viewing on YouTube. It discusses the history of the country of South Africa and the horrific threats of genocide that the farmers in South Africa are facing every single day. This topic is not really appropriate for viewing by anyone younger than teenage, but if you are a teen or older, you really do need to go and watch that documentary. So, um, let's talk about uh, the updates on the uh, fires, the car fire. Uh, in, my, in my last video, I talked about the car fire in Northern California. As of today, the blaze has burned to the ground almost 104,000 acres. It is beginning to be contained, uh, about 23%, I think, but uh, that may not be because the firefighters are winning. 
but more because the fire has nothing left to burn because everything has already burned. As far as we know, two firefighters and four people have already died. I mentioned a few of them in my last video. And there are 3,600 firefighters attempting to keep this fire and I believe up to 16 others across America right now. I mean, the, the wildfires... T trying to keep some under control. I will say this again. This mass drying, this aridification of the land, Remember, when fire burns everything to the ground, uh, it can kill the plants so that they don't regrow, and so the soil doesn't stay together. That leads to uh, landslides, mudslides, uh, land destroyed, uh, and of course it's, it's parched for water. This, so this mass aridification concerns me even more than the heat waves themselves do. If the United States tries to take in any more people from the, out, from the outside, and we know the Democrats want to open the borders to anyone and everyone forever, and look what that's led to in Europe, all across Europe, we are struggling as it is to feed, clothe, so much as keep alive and hydrated the populations that we do have. If we try to take in any more, there will be nothing left for anyone. I'm not kidding here. We Americans are a generous and sympathetic people, but that does not mean we have infinite resources. And what we do have is now spread very thin. I firmly believe that one of my roles, since I have the ability to connect some cause and consequence dots together, is to help make sure that my country does not become unsalvageable. That is what I'm doing, that is what with all of my information gathering and efforts I'm trying to do. I promise I will try to help us through the dark and difficult times that lie ahead, but I cannot magically make a rainforest appear from an arid wasteland. So. I think that is all for today and tonight. I have a lot to do tomorrow, but I will return. Please do check out the links in the video description that I posted for you. This is very important. Uh, except for the shark mapping. That was resolved and was really odd. But follow and keep an eye on everything else. Oh, and also go watch Ben Shapiro's show. He is one of the best explainers of world events I've ever seen. Till next time, this is Kistoraptorial.